A lot of the time, flat earthers will take their guidance from old, incorrect, or unreliable literature. Sometimes they'll even use genuine books to try and prove their feeble points. And if they're not doing that, then they're watching each other's YouTube videos and then calling themselves experts. So when I stumbled upon a video from a guy who was talking about the path of the sun over the flat earth, and he was basing that video on an old book, I thought I should set him straight. Hello all, and welcome to another Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Before we begin today, I want to make a small correction to Tuesday's video where I stated that I had seen Halley's Comet in the 90s. Of course I didn't, because it was in fact Comet Hale Bop. Should have researched like a flat earther, then I would have got it right. Either that, or it was grade A Mandela effect. More on that soon. Nonetheless, apologies. So back to today's video, and the one in question is from a flat earther called Banjo who has decided that a book about arithmetic helps prove something about Flat Earth. Can you imagine anything more ridiculous? Actually, don't answer that one. Let's just see what he's got. Hello guys, uh, we are here today to talk about this uh, book. I kid you not, he spends 45 seconds introducing this book. Let's just skip over that quickly. Some other people have made videos talking about this book but they made uh, on the computer the graphics and I have here a real model that we will be talking about what this book says. As you see here, this is uh, the Gleason's map and I have replaced the uh, Roman algorithm the 12 hours, 12 from 1 a.m. to 12 p.m. and then from 1 p.m. to 12 midnight I replaced for numbers not Roman uh, numbers but uh, no, regular numbers Okay, so you've got a Gleason's map and you've put a 24 hour clock around the outside Got ya! And let's go over this book and explain here in this model exactly what this book says. Now the green line represents the topics like the topic of Cancer right here we have the equator and then we have the topic of Capricorn this blue line here is the meridian of Greenwich okay the first meridian so this is uh, the 24 hours mark. Right so you've drawn on the equator and the tropics and you've put in a 24 hour meridian line right got you so far? So let's go to uh, page 195 and let's read what it says as we read we will explain on this model how what, exactly what it works so look at this right here the equatorial circumference of the earth is divided into 360 degrees which are called degrees of longitude longitude so here you have a circle a 360 degree circle and are the lines of longitude so you have 24 lines because 360 uh, degrees you divide it by 24 you're gonna have uh, have uh, um, does anyone else see the irony that he's basing this on a book about arithmetic 360 degrees divided by 24 hours is of course 15 degrees 24 15 degrees lines of longitude okay ah, I got there in the end well done, Banjo. Let's go to uh, 221. The sun apparently goes around the earth once in 24 hours. This time is called a day. Hence, in 24 hours, the sun apparently passes over 260 degrees of longitude and in one hour over 1 over 24 of 360 degrees equals 15 degrees. Notice he said apparently because we all know that the sun doesn't actually travel around the earth. So this is the path of the sun according to Charles Davis. Starts right here and in 24 hours circles the earth, passes over the earth. So this is one day and another day 
and another day. Yes, I think we get the picture. Okay, this is how it works exactly as it says here. Let's look at number 222. Since the sun in passing over 15 degrees of longitude requires one hour or 60 minutes of time, in one minute of time it will pass over 1 over 60 of 15 degrees equals 15 degrees over 60 equals 1 degree over 4 equals 15 of longitude. And in one second of time over 1 over 60 of 15 equals 15 over 60 equals 1 fourth equals 15 degrees of longitude. Here 15 degrees of longitude require one hour of time. Did anyone else understand that? So it means like from let's say 23 to 24 takes one hour. Now let's start right here on the 24. So one hour, another hour, another hour. So every time it passes over one line of longitude equals one hour. Okay, it takes one hour. And there it goes. Hi. Right. Thanks for breaking that down for us. I'm sure we all wouldn't be able to understand that otherwise. Right here. Now, as the sun apparently goes from east to west, at the instant of noon at one place, it will be past noon for all places at the east of it and before noon for all places at the west. So the sun goes from east to west. Everything uh, uh, in front of the sun will be a.m. Everything past the sun path will be p.m. So if it's noon right here in Japan, it means that it's probably 3 p.m. in New Zealand, but it's like 11 o'clock a.m. in parts of China, and 10 o'clock here, 9 a.m., 8 a.m., and that, this is how it goes. So everything in front of the sun will be a.m., everything past the sun, is PM. It's not difficult to match this model to real life when we're talking about time zones and all that. Okay, so this is a, a very easy explanation on the hours of the day and how the sun goes over the flat earth and explains also the time zones. All right, this is the time zones when when is uh, let's say, let's point to Brazil right here. All right, when it's noon in Brazil, it's definitely midnight here in Japan. Exactly how it works on a globe as well. Funny that. I speak to my family in Brazil sometimes. We have the same time there, but opposite, you know, like when it's 10 a.m. here, it's 10 p.m. over there. Okay, this is how it works. All right, now... As I said in one of my videos, I, I personally think that the sun does not go in a perfect circle like this, as I'm going to explain this video right now. Before he does that, I want to point out a glaring error. If this is truly what Banjo is going for, then he has to concede that his Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn have different circumferences. Therefore, in order for the sun to still make the journey in one day on the Tropic of Cancer, it would need to travel slower as it circles the Earth. However, do we see that? No, it always appears to move at 15 degrees per hour all year round. And that's because that 15 degrees per hour isn't the speed of the sun, it's our rotation that's making it appear to move like that. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks Bob, perfect timing. Okay, we see here the path of three eclipses in different times of uh, the year. You see the one that goes from uh, South America to Africa. It goes from Argentina, across the Atlantic Ocean, Congo, Red Sea. Then we have another one. Well, it's a geography lesson if nothing else, I guess. It starts uh, in mid Africa, goes through the Red Sea, India, and South China. And the last one, one that goes over the Pacific Ocean, over Caroline Island. Now you throw all this info to in, on the Gleason's map, 
And this is what we get. Same cities, same places, Argentina, Atlantic Ocean, Congo, Red Sea, India, South China, Hong Kong, Caroline Island. But you can see here clearly that it shows a circle on top of the Gleason's map. Would you look at that? Because this is the circuit of the sun and the moon. The, it's not a perfect circle like we thought it would be on top over the uh, Capricorn, Tropic of Tra Capricorn, or over the equator, or over the Tropic of Cancer. But it's still going in circles, and we what we can see is that the sun the, performs its own circuit according to where it, you know, to it, whatever it's supposed to, to do. But are eclipses the only time that you can measure the sun's location? No, they're not. You can do it whenever you want, as long as you can see it, of course. Now let's look at another one. This, uh, uh, this image here shows this, the path of three other um, eclipses. One in July, on July 22nd, 2009, then on November 3rd, 2013, and the next one that will happen on April 8th, 2024. It goes like a zigzag, but you know, this is not what happens. So let's throw out this info on the Gleason's map. And this is what we have. We have here uh, uh, exactly the same path, but you see on a circle. Not a perfect circle, again, as we say, but it's still the sun and the moon perform a circuit uh, all over the flat earth else notice how he's cherry-picked eclipses to make it fit his model? They aren't even eclipses from the same time of year. It's just rubbish. He does this once more, but it's more selective eclipses that are years apart and at different times of year. It actually proves nothing. He moves on to circumnavigation over a flat Earth. And this is how the circumnavigation of the Earth occurs on the flat Earth. As you see here, an airplane can go easily from west to east or from east to the west. This is how it works on flat earth. Right, I'm not really sure that this proves anything either. Okay, just like this uh, reporter explains in this video. It's, what it is, is an airplane that shows what future air travel may look like. Yes, it's almost as wide as a football field is long with just one seat. But just as the Wright brothers couldn't carry passengers, solar impulse represents the first steps in solar-powered flight. And to prove its potential, they began flying it around the world from Abu Dhabi last year with stops in India and China, then across the vast Pacific. Remember, it has no fuel. It then goes on to the United States, hopscotched across America, powered only by the sun. And now it has crossed its last ocean, the Atlantic. Not much further to go. So because a news reporter represents a flight on its studio floor, which is flat and not a globe, and probably for production reasons, then that means that the Earth is flat. Give me strength. I genuinely can't go on with this one anymore. The levels of confusion that Banjo shows about the natural world is quite simply staggering. Let's leave him to his little model. Right, that brings another episode of Flat Earth Friday to a satisfying close. Thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed it today, then please, please do like and subscribe. I have, as ever, been Simon Dan, and I shall see you all in the 90s, sorry, on Tuesday, for some UFO fun. Until then.